Hey guys, I uh, went ahead and stuck the tailgate on here to kind of give you an idea of what I was talking about with the gap on this thing. Uh, that's extremely too much. Uh, like I said before, it just barely catches the lock post. Down at the bottom looks pretty good. I mean, it's about the same as it is over here on this side clearance wise and this gap seems to be a lot more symmetrical although now that I'm standing here looking at it, it looks like it widens out at the top just a little bit the tailgate really won't shift from one side to the other so I think what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and do like I said on the last video I've got the uh, hoist hooked up I looked for my come along I couldn't find it so what I'm going to do with the uh, tailgate in place is just go ahead and pull on this a little bit. I'm going to take a before and after measurement from uh, bed rail to bed rail and kind of see how much I can pull it and uh, probably shorten the distance by half of an inch and see if it'll stay. And then uh, come back and see what's left after that. So I'll bring you back here in just a minute. Okay, it looks like at the very top edge we're at about 63 and 3 eighths or so. So I'm going to take the tape measure back off and pull this to see if I can get it over to about 63 and see if it stays there and then uh, put the tailgate up and check the alignment again and uh, we'll go from there. So I'll see you back in just a second. I got to pull over a little bit and kind of close the gap up. Unfortunately, once you get past a certain point, uh, no matter how much you tighten it down, it really doesn't want to pull it anymore and it just springs back because there's really nothing here to support it once you get it moved. Uh, matter of fact, it started denting the top of the stake pocket in at that point. I thought, well, I'm just going to stop. I went ahead and moved the uh, strikers in a little bit on both the sides and kind of got the tailgate lined up a little better. I can't move this one forward anymore, though, because it's already at the maximum limit of its travel. And I think uh, it's actually pretty good shape now. It's catching the striker real good and it doesn't look like it's going to miss. The gap inside the bed is pretty close to the same. So this might be one of those deals where, as I hate to say it, that's as close as it's going to get. The tailgate opens and closes good. Uh, you know, no issues there. I mean, you close it and it latches real good right away. You don't have to bang it or slam it or anything else. So that's probably going to be where it lives right there. Uh, as I hate it. I mean, you can only do so much of what you got, and I don't want to start trying to cut more of the understructure of this thing loose, trying to lay it back over. I mean, the tailgate functions. Let's face it, it's a work truck too. So if it was a show truck, yeah, I'd cut it all apart and move everything and then re-weld it. But that's just not in it for this one. So. I'll bring you guys back here in a few minutes when uh, I get this thing mocked up and you're ready to start tacking it. I'll see you in a few. Okay, guys, I got it uh, loosely tacked in there, about a half a dozen spot welds, just real small. Perhaps I could grind them off. It's looking pretty straight overall, uh, going with the body line and everything. Everything seems to line up pretty good. Of course, my... Uh, welders uh, flux core so it kind of makes a little bit of a mess but I think everything will clean up okay I was going to uh, leave that portion and then come over here oh, sorry the camera's fogging up teed off my hand sorry <laughs> uh, anyway uh, I'm going to come around here to this back corner now and uh, try and get it fitted up and see if I can't pull that down and get a couple of spot welds in there before I get all this stuff stitched up on this side but uh, the way the clamps and stuff went on there, I couldn't ever get everything lined up all in one position. Every time I started trying to move this corner back here, it kept trying to push everything off on this side. I had to put one spot weld uh, right here on the old sheet metal because when I took that other one off, this piece right here was kind of springy. So in order to get everything clamped down good, I put a spot weld on it. It looks pretty ragged, but uh, everything should grind up and clean up pretty well after I'm done. And of course, I welded the two of them together right there to make sure they stayed flush. But Overall, except for the lumps and the bumps of the welds themselves, that, feel, that feels pretty flush. But anyway, I'll uh, get this corner work back around and I'll bring you guys back in a few. Hey guys, 
I've pretty well got it uh, tacked in place. This was kind of a challenge getting this brace. Evident, I didn't have it down far enough, so I had to straighten it uh, down some more. It still doesn't overlap that panel real well. I'm sure we have one. But on the opposite side, it's pretty much the same way. It didn't go all the way to the bottom of the factory one either. So I'm kind of okay with that now. Uh, I did drill some holes in it for some spot welds. But unfortunately, uh, this one is down below the brace itself. So I'll uh, take a piece of copper and put behind it and fill that in. I've still got to grind these welds down. I pretty much got uh, the spot welds ground down on this one. It's pretty straight. I've still got to go down through there after it cools a little more and do some more stitches. I'll weld a little bit and let it cool. I've got this one right here uh, pretty much welded. I went back and filled in a little bit more right here at this corner. I've still got to grind it back down. And I think I'm just about done with that. One more grind on it. Got all the spot welds down through here pulling this panel together. I've still got two of those left to grind down. Uh, got the bolt in the brace and got that pushed out where it goes so everything's pretty much lined back up now uh, talking about copper for a backing plate on that uh, we were talking on mumble last night velvet hammer and I and uh, we were talking about the stuff to use for a backer and this is a piece of three inch copper pipe that I uh, flattened then bent into an L shaped <clears throat> and that was kind of what I was using underneath here putting it up underneath these holes so that <clears throat> the weld wouldn't fall through and it soaks up quite a bit of heat. Uh, of course, I've got some smaller pieces. I think I had a piece of three quarter inch regular copper and got it kind of flattened out to do the same thing in some of the smaller areas. But this works real well for uh, trying to fill large holes like this as it keeps your well from falling out of the bottom or keeps your puddle from going too deep. But basically, what I was doing was sitting underneath here with a pair of, uh, well, you can't see it's too dark with a pair of uh, reach over channel locks or vice grips, whatever you want to call them, and holding them in there and then filling the holes up. That's how I did all those on that side. Uh, but anyway, uh, I've still got a little bit more grinding on this to do. Taking my time trying to get this welded in. I've not turned the corner yet in here. Still got to finish welding that together. Uh, and then that's pretty much Got everything set in place. I wish I had one of the tail lights off of this truck here to do a test fit on it, but it's pretty much the same as it was with the other one, so hopefully everything will line up. Once I get these uh, spot welds and stuff ground down, I'm going to stick the tail, get back on it again, make sure nothing hasn't changed down here, I make sure none of this stuff rubs or anything. So uh, with that, I'll uh, bring you guys back when I get this thing uh, welded in there. Hey guys, I'm back. I got this thing pretty well welded in here, and everything seems to have went in pretty straight, uh, no warpage. I got everything ground down with my uh, angle grinder. Uh, got everything ready for some body filler. I went ahead and DA'd everything. I got this thing DA'd. Most of the scratches worked out it. I think the uh, primer will take care of the rest. I went ahead and uh, DA'd down the side of it here. Trying to get most of the clear off and also identify any low spots. I took a uh, Sharpie marker identified the, the low spots, which you can definitely tell where they are because it uh, doesn't sand out real good. A few more spots on here than what I thought. There's the one that's a little high. I'm going to take a hammer and kind of knock it down just a little bit. Took the gas filler door off and did around it. I'm still going to have to do all this in here by hand because of that lip. I don't want to break through into the metal if I can help it. Taped off around this uh, molding right here so I wouldn't end up scarring it up. I'm going to leave it on there. I don't want to have to take it off and then worry about trying to replace the... Uh, adhesive on it but everything worked out pretty well uh, got everything lined up like I said I've still got some work to do on this wheel lip right here is a couple of pretty heavy-duty dents and that's gonna be kind of hard to pull because it's double walled right through here where that inner fender goes up under it uh, I may try and pull that or I may just say it gets a little filler and be done with it like I said I've still got to do around that edge a little bit and I've still got a DA down through here, too. I hadn't really got anything down here. That's probably going to be fun to fix. Uh, we've got to take and try and fold that back up and then pull this back out right here where it's all dinged up. I think I can uh, pull it back around. If not, I can heat it up with a torch and reshape it and weld it back together. 
But other than that, uh, it's going pretty good. Of course, the uh, good old injury right there is about healed up, so I guess I'm ready for the next one. I've <laughs> uh, been wearing gloves ever since. Uh, I've got gloves up here. I don't know why I didn't think to put a pair on that day, just trying to get in a hurry and get stuff done. You know how it goes. Anyway, uh, I'm getting ready to uh, mix up a little filler, stick over that seam right there, and I'm going to go ahead and grind these other areas down to the metal first. So if I've got any left over, I've got places to put them. When I pulled this uh, bed side over there to that side, uh, ding dong, didn't think about putting a block of wood in there. So I ended up putting a little dink right there with the hook on the strap. So I'll have to kind of fill that in. I tried to pull it up with a, a pry bar and it didn't do a whole lot except try to wrinkle it up. So I'm just going to put a little filler on it. A little spot right here, it's kind of low too, right there in that corner. You know how it is, the more you sand, the more you find, the more you fix, the more you find. So, anyway, I'll uh, bring you guys back whenever I get something else to show you. See you in a few. Okay, I got that uh, edge bent back up there. Of course, that metal was split right there, so I had to do a little bit of hammer and dolly work to get everything folded back up, and then there was a pretty good chunk of metal missing, I guess, where it broke when it uh, split. So I had to put my copper heat sink in behind that. I just clamped it in place with a pair of channel locks there and uh, welded that metal up. I'm getting ready to grind everything back down now and see if I've got any pinholes I need to weld back up. I'm still going to have to do a little bit of work underneath here to get that corner straightened out. It folded that piece of metal over and I've still got to straighten that lower flange. But I had to get this all done first because what happens with that uh, metal being split like that, every time I hit it with a hammer dolly, it was just bouncing. I couldn't get it to uh, stay in position. So now that i got this corner tacked back down, I can uh, work the rest of it and try and get it in shape back the way it's supposed to be. So when I get some more done, I'll bring you guys back. See you in a few.